Hi everybody, welcome to a new uh, tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to explore or give an overview of the latest addition to the family of uh, products from uh, Igor Vasiliev. And this time it is called Soundso. Probably for me, it's more about sound destruction, sound uh, experimentation as well. So perhaps um, you can make up your mind as you listen to what uh, it can do. I have a number of codes to give uh, away courtesy of Ego. Please follow the instruction in the video description if you would like to participate to the, the giveaway. And also make sure that the giveaway is still running. Just check in on the video description if indeed uh, uh, subscribers have been announced or not. And please do, remind, do remember to uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, as that helps with uh, growing the channel, bringing more tutorials, videos, giveaway etc etc so i'm inside the um and i'm going to create an audio channel and i'm going to choose as a, an audio uni extension the grand piano here and let's connect it also to the keyboard um i just chose that as an example but you could choose something else as well typical grand piano right and then as insert effects we are going to search for S A W for sound so and there it is so let's open it and let's also go in uh, up and down the presets here as I just done so that it resets the empty preset to the default so that when I press some notes on the keyboard you just hear the normal sounds from the ground piano your audio uni extension so um here you have the selection of preset. It comes with a number of preset by default. Here is where you can delete, rename preset. You can create a new one based on the current one, which is active, including the alteration. And, um, and you can save one and you can set one as well. And I recommend that you explore some of these. You can go to the next preset or the previous preset, and you can find this one called empty preset as your uh, preset to start from. Then you will have uh, two buttons here to randomize parameters. The vary for variation, um, randomize everything with the exception of the input level, the static noise, the output level, the dry wet, and also the threshold for maximizer and envelope. While the randomize instead um, avoid again the input level the static noise, the output level, uh, and the dry wet as well. But um, so between the two of them, the very just gives slightly variation of what you currently have. The randomizer changes also some of the settings like the different modes and effects which are uh, uh, selected. So it's more uh, intrusive as a, a variation. So normally you click random um to generate a completely different sound and then you tweak the different dials to make it your own and when you reach something that you like then you can use the variation to create a slightly variation to the current preset okay and then you have some settings here for the application and you have a nice uh, also help which is really really useful so as you can see it works from the left to the right here you have a number of different modules. The first one is an input. You see the meter here, and you see also the output meter here, and you have an output level as well in the output module. You have um, drive and wet effect, so you can mix dry and wet. And indeed, you can also set the frequency, uh, yeah, cutoff frequency of the dry effect of the input signal, and you can use that to replace a part of the signal really with something that you want to transform and here you can see the selection of the effect if you want to do a low pass high pass uh, for the uh, frequency you want to cut off from the dry signal um, I set it now to all wet so we can hear uh, what it transforms this the input signals to so here you have the input in terms of gain Here you have some static noise. 
and you can choose the type here from console, tape, analog synth, early digital synth, and then you can set how to treat the input uh, a signal as a stereo or just as a mono or treat the left channel, only the right channel, or stereo. Even if you treat it as a mono, the output will always be stereo. You have also a dynamic noise, so this one adjusts the level of static noise based on the input signal level. Therefore, if this is higher than the static noise, you find that the noise will increase based on the input signal level, and vice versa, if it's lower, it will decrease the static noise. You can hear the static noise is increasing. And you can hear the, that it is decreasing, okay? The static noise doesn't go through the maximizer, just remember that as well. Okay, the maximizer is used to as the name says, to maximize the input signal. So you have a threshold here. So when the input signal goes above the threshold, um, it will start to, to maximize the input signal. You have an attack, which uh, will give you in second how long it will take for the input signal to go reach the maximum. And hold, uh, which will keep the, um, the, the um, signal to its maximum when the threshold uh, is when the signal is below the threshold, okay? And you can establish that in seconds as well. And then you have your release as well, which determines how long uh, the signal will take to go to the current level when it reaches uh, below threshold. So, um, and you have also maximize um, option here. So when it's on here, it will maximize the input signal along the effects as well, which are in the next module. So just play around with the with these uh, um, effects and these parameters to see what the, uh, uh, what happens. And also please do remember to pay particular attention to the output level because it can go really high. You see a T here, when that T is active, it means the maximizer is on. When the H is active, it means the hold is on. And also forgot to, to tell you that L, L and R here, left and right, are showing when the input signal is on the left and right channel. Now, next, you can add some distortion. This is the typical Overload is like when the signal is clipping. Nice. Double click, it will reset the default value. You can lose bit def here with the decimator. You can add some bit crash. And you have different modes here underneath bit crash A, B. Sound so, fractions, okay. And then here you have a feedback similar to the acoustic feedback. Please pay attention if you have an overload on at the same time of feedback because it can get very loud. Okay, we have also here an envelope which we lacked on the filter, and you have here a dial which establishes how much the envelope will in impact or affect the filter. If it is zero, of course, the filter will work as static, where you can decide how to adjust your cutoff in frequency and resonance there as well. But if not, you just adjust here the level or how the envelope will impact the filter. So you have sensitivity here, you establish the variation in terms of sensitivity. So if it goes, uh, if there is a difference of minus 8.7 in this case, um, in the input signal that the envelope will trigger, and then you have a bit of attack and release that you can set, okay? And then you can establish if you want to have a linear mode for attack and release or logarithm, or exponential as well. 
Now you see uh, at the bottom here NA, which will activate when you have an attack, and an R, which will activate when you have a release. Okay, single, it will go to attack and then release. Then threshold will go to attack. And then when it goes below the sensitivity, uh, then it will act as uh, it will start the release. Then you have a repeat, which will repeat uh, attack and release intermittently as long as the envelope is triggered. Okay, and um, and then you have uh, the continuous, which will continue will continue to alternate between attack and release. <laughs> You can hear now the continuous. Let me show you the difference with uh, the repeat. See, it stopped there because it, it would have had received a variation greater than what has been set on the sensitivity and therefore it will stop the alternative between attack and release. So that's the big difference with continue. Let's put a logarithm as a, um, attack and release uh, curve. Very, very different. We can still adjust the frequency in terms of cutoff. The resonance. And we can uh, amplify the bass as well. And we can decide if we want to have a low pass filter, high pass, bend pass, or notch. So pay attention, as you can see, it was clipping here um, as an output in the AUM. And of course, just play with the random function as well. Okay, let's click random again. Let's click random again. And you can, of course, bypass the effect clicking in here. And of course, you can try also some of the preset as well. And if you use, for example, an acoustic guitar as an input signal, you can create something like a distortion easily. Okay, I'm going to stop here and this was just an overview. I'm sure I will create other tutorials to explain in more details as um, how each uh, module works. And please do leave comments if there are questions that you would like to answer and I will create video as appropriate. Please do remember to subscribe as I mentioned at the beginning of the video that will help a lot. Thank you very much. Bye.